You have just assumed the role of cloud architect. You are now the top gun for your organization as far as cloud strategy is concerned. I'll make you better. But what do you focus on first? Where do you start? Today, I'm going to give you a download of my experience and help you prioritize the things you need to focus on first to better prepare you for success. Stick around. This is going to be a lot of fun. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Elias Kineser, and today we're going to answer the question, what should a cloud architect do in their first 100 days? Now, if you like this type of content, do me a favor, hit that like button. That will help the YouTube algorithm bring this video to as many people as possible. Share the video, leave a comment below. I'd love to have a conversation on this topic. Make sure you also hit the notification bell so that you're alerted the next time I upload a video. Your first 100 days as a cloud architect are going to be critical for your success. It is within the first 100 days that people's impression of you is going to be formed. How organized are you? Are you a subject matter expert? How do they communicate with you? Are you going to be able to make this project successful? A lot of things are going to be banking on these 100 days. So you need to take a step back and make sure that you have a good plan in place so that when you come out the gate, people understand that you're someone that is confident, maybe a little arrogant, a little arrogant, but approachable, right? But you wanna be someone who knows their subject matter expert, someone who's organized, someone who's setting the tone for how you communicate with others. You wanna be able to do all of that within the first 100 days. Because if you don't, and I'm not saying you can't recover if you have a misstep, but it'll be very difficult to recover. Once someone's impression is set, changing that takes months, takes years. So take a step back, build a proper plan and go after it. Let's start with number one, beware of first impressions. Your first impression is an opportunity for you to establish your credibility with the person that you're talking to. So make sure that the other person that's across the table from you or the other persons that are across the table from you understand that you are a serious person, that you are here on a specific mission to get something completed, something done. You wanna make sure that you're establishing your credibility, your expertise, your organizational skills. You also wanna make sure that you're setting the tone for how you and this other person or persons are going to communicate. So you wanna be, again, you wanna be approachable, you wanna be confident, but you also wanna make sure that uh, you know you don't become a form of, let's call it a jokester or someone that is not serious. So this is your opportunity and, and this is truly a sensitive time because it is the first impression. If you give the wrong first impression, you can fix it, but it will take time and effort. So make sure you invest enough time when you're going to talk with someone that you've never talked to before to understand how you wanna set the stage between you and them. Number two, assess the current landscape. Now, yes, I'm pretty sure this was on your list. You're going to take a look and see what's going on, but I want you to focus on specific things above and beyond what you are going to do anyway. So you were going to look at the technology, I'm sure. You are going to take a look at which providers you currently have, or maybe you don't have. So I know you are going to look at that and you still should be taking a look at what do you currently have in your data center? Do you have um, workloads that you know cannot go to the cloud, AS400s, maybe Unix uh, systems, etc. You wanna look at, are we using cloud providers? All of that is great. You wanna, you wanna do a current good assessment of the technology and the providers. But you also wanna do a cultural assessment. And let me tell you what that means. You wanna know what you're getting into. So we, we talked about first impressions of how people are going to perceive you. In, in the culture conversation that I'm going to talk about now, I want you to now ha have the reverse. So now it's your turn to assess their first impression from your perspective, right? So every time you're talking to someone new, you should be taking notes about the conversation, but you should also be taking notes about that person's personality for a variety of reasons. You wanna understand where this person is in terms of their cloud excitedness, let's call it. How excited are they about cloud? Are they pro-cloud? Are they anti-cloud? Are they making valid points? Uh, is it a matter of knowledge and skills gap that you, have to, that you have to work on? Is this person a good candidate for the cloud center of excellence that you will eventually uh, become. So remember, as a cloud architect, you are the foundation of the cloud center of excellence. Now I'm gonna call it cloud center of excellence or CCOE during this video. You could call it a community of practice. I mean, the CCOE can have multiple different 
terminologies in different organizations, but because CCOE is generally acceptable and you'll know what I'm talking about, I'm going to call it CCOE. You can feel free to call it whatever you want within your organization. But remember, you are the foundation of the CCOE. So you wanna assess the culture of the organization in general. Are they a conservative organization that is not taking any risks, any uh, maybe challenges, maybe cloud is going to be too foreign to them. That will help you uh, figure out how you're going to introduce cloud. How much of an effort, how much evangelization, how much education you need to invest in. And you need to also do this at an individual level. So as you're talking to people, like I said, you want to take notes of their strengths, their weaknesses, because these people can potentially at some point, either you're going to invite them to be part of the CCOE or by because of their job, they're going to need to be involved in the CCOE. But having good notes, your first impressions are going to be crucial, helps you make all of these determinations. So assess the culture in general for innovation, for cloud readiness, for how excited they are about cloud and assess the individuals because when you find individuals that are going to be difficult, that you know are going to be difficult, you're going to want to invest maybe more time working on them to try to win them over. And that'll also depend on the sensitivity of their position and that will tell you how much work you have to invest in them. That will be the same for executives as well. So you want to know which are the executives that you're going to be able to work with. Again, which one of the executives you're going to need to spend more time on, you're going to have to educate, evangelize. Now, I also want you to assess the level of shadow IT that exists in the organization. The level of shadow IT could be become a challenge for your role as a cloud architect, because now you're trying to bring, uh, you're, you're trying to structure, you're trying to bring order to the chaos that exists. And shadow IT is a form of chaos that you need to bring order to, but you're not going to be able to fix shadow IT if you don't know to what extent there is shadow IT. So for example, is the marketing department, you know, on their own? Do they have an AWS account that's outside of central IT and they're just running their own thing? Are this, is it just the marketing department or do you also have developers that are maybe using Google for a similar manner or maybe Azure? So you want to assess the entire landscape of how much shadow IT there is. And as part of the cultural assessment that you've done earlier, you'll know how dug in these folks are. So you'll know if you're going to start to introduce policies, governance, etc. you'll know how much of a challenge you can expect out of shadow IT. So that's going to be crucial for you to properly assess earlier on. Number three, identify and engage the stakeholders. So as part of your 100 day plan, you want to make sure that you've talked to all of the executives. You want to make sure that you've touched base with your CIO or whoever you're reporting to, to understand the level of engagement, the level of involvement that they're going to want to have in this cloud strategy. They might say, hey, you know, you're on your own. I want you to go do the right interviews, find the right executive sponsor, build the cloud strategy. They might want some oversight, some say in it. So you want to make sure that whoever you're reporting directly to, whether it's the CIO, sometimes it's not the CIO, you want to understand their level of involvement in this project. You also want to start to talk to different executives. Your role as a cloud architect is not a strictly technical role. Your role is to translate the business requirements into technical requirements. That is your primary responsibility. Now you want to engage, you want to talk to all of the executives to understand who is going to be that one executive that you can have as a sponsor. That one person that, that you know, if you, if you give them the right education, if you evangelize to them, they're going to get it. The person that's going to have the vision to help you craft your cloud strategy. That is going to be crucial to your success. That's going to take time. So make sure that you start that early. Number four, this is probably going to be the longest amount. This is going to take the longest amount of time in your first 100 days. Ideate, develop and communicate the cloud strategy. So the first part of the cloud strategy, you need to have discussions with everyone. You need to take into account everyone's opinions, everyone's positions, talk to your executives. There's a lot of conversations that are going to happen in the first part. That's the ideation part. This is going to help you to start developing, to start documenting your cloud strategy. Then comes the writing of the document. This is where you're developing the document. You're documenting everything that you've heard and you're adding your own experience to where this company needs to go. Here, you're potentially going to have a lot of input from your executive sponsor 
and from your direct reports, whether it's the CIO or whoever it is that you're reporting to if they want involvement. So typically when you're developing the cloud strategy, when you're documenting it, it's going to be a trinity of people that is going to help craft it. It's going to be you primarily, it's going to be your executive sponsor, and it's going to be your CIO or equivalent. After you have documented the cloud strategy, it is crucial to socialize the cloud strategy, to communicate the cloud strategy to everyone. This is going to be the second round of reviews. So the first round of reviews, you were hearing what their ideas were, you were taking that into account, you were documenting. Now you have a draft. This draft is going to be circulated. Everyone is going to give their opinion of this. This is where you're going to take their opinion into account, but you're not necessarily bound to their opinion. Remember, there's a trinity of people that is driving this. And these are the people who will eventually make the determination of how you're gonna move forward. You're never going to satisfy everyone. So at some point, you just have to draw a line in the sand and say, we've taken your feedback into account, thank you. This is version one. We will continue to revise our strategy, but this is what we ask everyone to get behind in terms of this organization's cloud strategy moving forward. That's going to be also important for setting the tone, right? So this all goes back to those that first impression. How serious of a person are you? How can they influence you? Can they get you to change your mind? Can they put pressure on you? All of that gets determined. So again, like before, be careful of first impressions, but once you draw that line in the sand, we wanna be able to move forward as a unit. Number five, create a skills and learning plan. So as part of your assessment, the cultural part of your assessment, you've talked to a lot of folks, maybe that's enough, maybe you have to do a proper skills assessment to understand the types of certifications that you have, to understand who knows what in terms of cloud. And you're gonna do that at the INO level, at the security level, at the database administrators level, you're going to do that at the developer level, the business application owners level. You wanna understand what the landscape looks like and their knowledge, their understanding of cloud in general and of the specific cloud providers in particular. So if you're using AWS, Azure, and Google, you wanna understand your capabilities for these cloud providers. So make sure you have a matrix that says we have strong you know, skills when it comes to this provider, weak skills when it comes to that provider, etc. You wanna build a matrix based on that matrix you can now build a learning path so that you can direct folks to take certain training, certain certification, build certain skills, go to certain conferences, all of that to elevate everyone's skills in order to make the project successful. One of the biggest mistakes that cloud architects and organizations in general underestimate is the amount of skills that you have to implement what you're going to document. So while your job of ideating, documenting, communicating is crucial, at some point you have to execute. So as part of the first 100 days, you wanna identify those gaps and start building a learning path so that you can plug those gaps to ensure that your cloud project will be successful. Number six, set up the framework for the cloud center of excellence. Remember, you are the cloud architect. You are the foundation of what will later become your cloud center of excellence. So as a starting point, do some simple things, some basic things. You know, start by looking into governance, right? You can start with simple things from a governance perspective, like account governance. What is the criteria for creating an AWS account? What is the criteria for creating an Azure subscription? Start documenting this criteria. Maybe you issue a cloud usage policy. A cloud usage policy will help you when you're trying to get shadow IT under control because once that policy is now issued and there's broad acceptance of it and you have to be able to enforce it, this is where your executive sponsor will come into play. This is where your direct report, your CIO, or whoever it is that you report to will be able to help here enforcing the policies that you're going to be issuing, right? So maybe you publish your first policy document that says if you want to get to a particular cloud provider, you have to come through central IT, or you have to come through the CCOE, or you have to come through whichever entity that you create, whichever, whoever's going to be that broker that's going to connect the user community to those cloud services so that they can no longer bypass and go directly to the cloud providers, swipe a credit card and get access to these services. That's going to be important. They won't stop doing that until there is something written and something enforced. So by starting to do some of these small things, small steps, you are setting the framework 
for the CCOE to publish many other policy documents later on. You're going to have a workload placement policy document and a bunch of other things, but you want to start small. And again, you only, we're talking here about the first 100 days. There's really only so much you can do in the first 100 days. So when it comes to number six and you're setting the framework for the CCOE, don't feel like you have to do everything. But again, start with baby steps, some of the obvious things, the easy wins that you can do in order to show that, hey, there is an entity here. There is something here that is going to start governing our relationship with the cloud providers. Last but not least, create KPIs, key performance indicators, and create a metric scorecard. A metric scorecard means you, you need to be able to measure yourself. You need to be able to know that you've made progress. You need to be able to show that you've made progress. So if you've built a skills matrix and a learning path, give that some kind of a score, give it a weight, so that when you're talking to whoever you're reporting to, you're able to show, hey, in the first 60 days, 90 days, 100 days, I was able to accomplish these things. This is the, the weight of these things as far as their impact on our cloud strategy. So it's crucial to set KPIs for the project and that will be part of the, the KPIs that you're going to document in your cloud strategy document. But you also want to maintain a metric scorecard, maybe a small Excel dashboard that you can look at at any time, that you can share with others that will show the progress, what you've done so far. So if you've created a governance of some sort, maybe it's a policy document on the usage of cloud, maybe it's an account governance, all of those need to be metric. You have to put some kind of a weight against them so that someone can take a look and say, we've done a lot of things in the first 100 days. So here, what I'm trying to say is make sure that your effort does not go um, unseen. You want to give yourself credit, but you want to give yourself credit where credit is due. All of the things that you're completing, you wanna make sure that you are highlighting those things. Don't just try to rely on where they're going to see the progress. No one's gonna see the progress. You need to document this progress. You need to give this progress a score. And if by some means, if you're talking to your CIO and your CIO is like, I don't believe that the score that you've given uh, the cloud policy document deserves to be X, it deserves to be Y, then by all means you can tweak it. But the idea here is that you're able to show what progress you've made, the things that, you, that you've tackled, you're always able to show and also be held accountable for all of the things that you've done in the first 100 days. Seven things. That's a lot of things to do in the first 100 days. If you can complete all of those in the first 100 days, if you can complete the cloud strategy document, then I would say you are off to a really, really good start. Now, let me know in the comments below if I've missed anything. If as a cloud architect in your first 100 days, you did something outside of this list, I would love to learn from you. Give us some context. Let the community also understand what you were facing, how did you handle it? I would like to learn from you as much as I'm pouring my knowledge and my experience into these videos, into this community, I also want to learn. I always wanna learn. So if you find something that I've missed, maybe something that's number eight, or maybe you didn't like something on this list that needs to be tweaked, I'm happy to do another video at a later time and we can update this list so that more, more people can learn from our collective experience. Again, if you like this type of content, do me a favor, hit that like, share, definitely leave a comment below, hit that notification bell so that you're alerted the next time I upload a video. I love you all. Thank you for watching to the end and I will see you in the next one.